It's time for another project on the Okanagan Valley Railway. Join me as I work on improvements, new scenery, etc. Hopefully, you will learn something and I will not injure myself. A while back, I did a video on adding a switch in a different location on my layout, which both made switching easier and reducing derailments. Now, I want to add some scenery to this area, as well as paint and ballast the track that I put in during that project. So let's get started. Looking at it from a general overview, we're going to start up in the top corner with a new piece of track that replaces the switch. I'm going to ballast and paint the rails. Then I'm going to put down cinder ballast where the track used to go, pave over the road, cinder there, and also ballast that section. And lastly, scenic that small area right there. My bill of materials, white and black acrylic paint, paint tray, some brown and yellow woodland scenics, some uh, black cinder ballast, I use gray as well, sand I'm going to use for gravel, and some green turf as well. Now for the fun part, I get to play with plaster. So in this case, I actually used a drywall compound, Durabond 90. I get the stuff that comes in the powder mix. You can get pre-made, whatever suits you, or whatever plaster you want to work with. So I stirred it up into a nice mix, uh, thick enough that you can work with, but still uh, very malleable. And I used my putty knife, as you can see, to uh, apply it to the section I want to uh, do over the road. What I'm doing there, actually, is I'm covering up the track, which prototypically is what they did. It was very expensive and difficult to remove rails out of the roadway. In most cases, they would just pave right over it. And rails, in many cases, just stay there for years and years. Um, undetected in some cases until they did a major uh, reconstruction project and then they would uh, potentially remove the rails. In order to smooth it out better, I use the drywall uh, compound or joint compound tool, the uh, plastic thing there, to really get a nice smooth finish. And uh, that's really about it. And then you gotta let it dry uh, at least a few hours. Uh, sometimes I just let it dry overnight. I think you get the gist of it. So uh, let's just move on to the next step, shall we? Next, I take a piece of sandpaper and I uh, carefully sand and smooth out the area. After sanding, I get out the shop back and clean up the mess. Next, I start at the edge of the layout. I do this to prevent any kind of running of my glue water mixture from flowing off the edge of the layout. So I just use regular white glue and I've put, as you can see, green tape on the side here as well. Once the glue's down, I use a craft brush to spread it around the area where I want to put down the scenery. Next, I apply my yellow Woodland Scenics coarse turf. I follow that up with my fine green mix of turf. Lastly, I take my mixture of water and isopropyl alcohol and I spray that over top to get everything mixed in nicely with the glue base. Now I need to paint the rails of the new piece of track that I put in. I use an enamel paint by Humbrol as I find the uh, paint goes on well and adheres and it looks good once it's on there. I also use a brush as you can see. Some people prefer to use an airbrush or to use different types of paints or even the paint pens. It's really up to your own personal preference. I also start with the furthest rail first. If I start with the nearer rail, it can get very messy. Once I've done painting the side of the furthest rail, I take a paper towel or you can use a rag and I clean off the top of the rail while it's still wet. That reduces the amount of cleanup that you have to do after the fact. Next, I will repeat the process on the nearest rail. I don't bother painting the other side of the rails because nobody's going to ever see it anyway. On a layout where you have visual from both sides, you may want to paint both sides of the rail. Now it's time to put the ballast in. I just use a simple little container. In this case, it's an old jello container. And I just spread it on both the middle and then you'll see me go down the sides of the tracks as well. I forgot to remove the conveyor between the two buildings. 
Now I take my craft brush and I brush along the rails and make sure that there's little or no ballast on the actual top of the ties. You want the ballast in between the ties. And then I go along, I do the sides as well. Until you get a nice finished look that you're happy with. Now I'm applying the cinder ballast to the track area that was lifted. I then apply cinder ballast to the new piece of track that I've added on the spur. Repeating the process I did with the gray ballast earlier, I use my brush and apply it evenly on the middle and on the sides. Now I apply the coarse yellow foam again, this time to the gaps in the area as well as over the ballast of the track that was removed and on some of the current track area and around where the parking area is going to be. Now I'm applying the sand that is actually going to be used as gravel in the parking area. I apply more yellow coarse turf around the parking area again. And then when that's done, I throw down some green just to blend in the turf and add some variety to the color in the area. In order to get the parking lot to make it look like it's been driven in, I take one of my HO scale cars, punch buggy blue, and I run it through to create wheel ruts. Now I take my spray bottle of the water alcohol mix again, and using a cardboard as a backing so I don't get uh, water all over the place, I spray it onto the area that I have just put all the ballast and scenery down and wet it down really nice so it's easy to apply the glue with it floating all over the place. Now I apply the glue water mixture. Um, it's about, I use about a 50-50 mix. You can use various mixes, um, but I just find that's about the best effective. I just use an old uh, glue bottle and just shake it well every once in a while and apply it. Uh, I apply it both to the track and to the uh, scenic areas. Once I'm done with that, I usually let it dry overnight or so just to make sure it, it uh, is, uh, the glue hardens. Once the glue is dried, I take a pick tool and just pick away at the ballast that's stuck to the side of the rails or on the ties, just to make the uh, track, especially the main line, look a bit cleaner. I also do the same process along parts of the uh, spur, but not as much because it's not usually as neatly ballasted. I then take some of my scenery in that, and I just patch up some areas that I don't think were covered enough the first time. I just go through it again. Put the foam down as you can see here and then once again I will spray with the uh, water alcohol mix and then put down the glue water mix. Uh, those parts I didn't show again, it's just the same process I showed earlier. Now it's time to paint the parking lot. So I didn't have gray so I took my white paint and added just a little bit of black to get the gray that I needed to make that nice gravelly color. Now I need to make the sand that I have as an extra material look like gravel, which is another way I did a little bit of cost savings. I don't want to go out and buy some more uh, light ballast at this point. So I'm using the sand, but I need to make it look like gravel and make it gray. So I've taken the paint that I've mixed from the black and white, and I'm going to apply it now to the sand and make it look like gravel. Now it's time to paint the area that was paved over the railway tracks on the roadway. Now asphalt is a very dark color when it's first applied, uh, basically a black color before it fades off to a gray. So I'm just using my black paint and what I did as you can see I put down the uh, the painter's tape to, uh, so it's nice and squared off and I just applied the paint nice and evenly um, and then after fact I even went and touched it up a little bit. After putting down some of the scenery, some of the glue in that went onto my roadway and kind of discolored it. 
So I actually went along and touched it up. Once again, doing the uh, a mix. This was a little bit of lighter gray, but the same principle as I used for making the gravel parking lot. To finish the project, I had to put in the yellow line again. So once again, using the uh, painter's tape to make a nice straight line, I just applied the yellow paint. I did have to go back after the fact, touch it up a little bit with a second coat. Here's a quick overview of the completed project. I was very pleased with the way it came out. So that's it for my project and just uh, ended off here with a couple of test trains. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw and wish to see more content on model trains and real trains, please subscribe to my channel.